Welcome to the lesson data transmission via SENT protocol part 2. How is data properly transmitted using SENT protocol? The decisive factor in coding a signal according to the SENT protocol is time. Each data value is coded and decoded by setting and measuring pulse times. We therefore measure the time for each data nibble and receive. For the synchronization pulse, 840 microseconds. For status and communication, 180 microseconds. For data 1, 405 microseconds. For data 2, 255 microseconds. For data 3 to 6 following values. And for the check some 315 microseconds. For decoding of the synchronization's pulse time we take the measured time of 840 microseconds. According to the specification the elapsed time of the synchronization pulse corresponds to 56 ticks. To acquire the time interval for each tick these two values have to be put into relation. By dividing the time value of the synchronization pulse by the number of ticks. We receive an interval time of 15 microseconds per tick. This time per tick serves us in the following as a unit for the further decoding of the signal. Let's have a look at how data 1 is coded. We already measured the time value of 405 microseconds for data 1. To calculate the number of ticks for data 1, we divide the time value for data 1 of 405 microseconds by the time per tick of 15 microseconds. Accordingly, we receive a value of 27 ticks for data 1. Overall, the longer the measured time for a data nibble, the higher the amount of ticks. Now this number of ticks has to be converted into binary data. Since the minimum time for a data nibble is 180 microseconds and the maximum time is 405 microseconds, the number of ticks results in numerical values ranging from 12 to 27. For the shift of the offset to 0, the value 12 therefore has to be subtracted from the number of ticks. The result of this shift now can be converted from a decimal to a binary value. Overall, it can be said, the higher the number of ticks, and thus the measured time, the higher the value transmitted. In summary, the method of the sent signal decoding consists of three steps. First, the measured time for each data nibble is divided by the time per tick. Thus, you receive a number of ticks for the data nibble. Then the offset is shifted by subtracting 12 from the number of ticks. You get a decimal value for the data nibble. This decimal value is finally converted into a binary value. Let's apply the same proceeding in another example. Data nibble 2 should now be encoded. For data 2 we measured the time 255 microseconds. If we divide this value by the time per tick of 15 microseconds which we previously calculated from the synchronization, we get 17 as the number of ticks for data nibble 2. Then we subtract 12 to move the offset to 0 and get 5 as the decimal value for data 2. This value of 5 is represented by 0101 in the binary system. So far, we dealt with the standard transmission in the SENT protocol. However, due to its time dependency, this implies that the individual data telegrams always have different lengths. This has the advantage that no idle times arise and the capacity of the line is always fully utilized, under certain conditions. However, it may be desirable for each data frame to have the same length. This way a time synchronization of the data telegrams takes place. For this the SENT protocol provides the optional pause pulse, 
adding the pause pulse results in data telegrams which have the same length, but at the same time the data transmission is slowed down by this delay. What should you keep in mind about the data transfer via sent protocol? First, the data transmission always takes place in one direction and over one line. Second, the data value is calculated based on the time measured. For further training material and courses for different topics within the embedded domain please visit eclipsina.com.